this is Captain Chaudhary. Today I am going to speak to you about uh, the tides, the formation of tide, rather theory of tides. Uh, for centuries it has been always a question in front of the philosophers, the thinkers, the scientists as to how the tides occur. It has been an interesting subject for everybody. So there were uh, very old theories which were put forward but we are going to talk about the recent times and recent times would mean something like after 1500 or so. Now, uh, there was this equilibrium theory that was put up. What is the meaning of equilibrium theory? Before we understand equilibrium theory, let us understand how the high water is created. Right? So, uh, you must have seen, you might have seen a picture like this in the books who are trying to explain the tide, right? There is a heap under the moon and on the opposite side and if we say, say this is moon, this is high water caused by the moon here, high water caused by moon here and low water, low water caused by the moon. Now moon and sun, these are the two astronomical bodies which cause the maximum tidal force that we face. Now moon's tidal force is higher than the sun's tidal force for obvious reason that moon although very small in comparison with the sun has got uh, a close vicinity with the earth so influence is more right now the question is if the gravitational pull of moon is going to pull this water and what about this water which is on the opposite side this is understandable sublunar point what about this point so there is a theory to explain this effect let us consider one gram of solid mass earth and one gram of adjacent water let us understand what is the uh, attractive force what is the gravitational pull because of the moon we know from the newton's formula the gravitational pull is equal to g m m upon r square g is universal gravitational constant and m m are the masses the mass of the body who's attracting and mass which is getting attracted so in our case like there is one gram we are considering one gram of uh, water particle or one gram of the solid earth r is the distance involved so when we are considering the pull we have to consider the distance from one gram particle till the center of the moon right now there is difference in the pull on this one gram of water and one gram of solid particle and reason for that is one gram of solid particle is not independent it is connected to the rest of the earth so position of this one gram of solid particle should be considered at the center of the earth and therefore the distance involved in case of the solid earth should be this distance which is much more compared to this distance so there is a difference tremendous difference in gravitational pull between one gram of uh, solid earth and one gram of adjacent water because of this difference in gravitational pull what happens is compared to the earth the rest of the water gets pulled towards the moon right now it's understandable that how the heap is formed here how the pileup takes place here but what about this place so once again if we consider one gram of fluid and one gram of solid earth the earth is supposed to be over here once again there is difference in distance and because of this difference in distance there is much stronger gravitational pull on the solid earth how do you explain in the equilibrium so in the equilibrium it is explained by leaving that mass of water the pile of water behind in the space as if the earth is pulled and the water remains behind because of difference in gravitational pull so this is what explains the heap on this side and this side let us try and understand a few other things which are associated with uh, the tide and one of the most interesting thing to understand here is what are these spring tides and neap tides for that let us understand that there is sun and moon both in line it's a uh, it's a it's immaterial whether uh, moon is in conjunction or moon is in opposition because you have pile on sublunar point as well as on the opposite side so let us say in this particular situation when the moon is in conjunction this is the pile up because of moon and this is the pile up because of sun i show it by pect line both 
the high waters they add up and both the low waters are trying to compress the water level so what happens because of this is we are having extraordinarily strong tide and these are called spring tides so it does not make a difference whether the moon is here or in opposition moon is over here now what happens when the moon is over here let us see what happens when the moon is over here heat that is caused by moon and heat which is caused by sun are 90 degrees apart so this is the heat that is caused by moon this is the heat that is caused by moon and this is the heat that is caused by sun and this is the heat that is caused by sun which means that moon wants to have high water here and here low water here and here whereas the sun wants to have high waters here and here low waters here and here so that means their powers their forces are acting opposite to each other and this causes a high water which is not so high and low water which is not so deep so these are called neap tides so neap tides are the one where the high water is not as high as spring tide or even normal tide and low water is not as deep as normal tide or for that matter spring tide so this is neap now having understood the spring tides and neap tides let us understand what is priming and lagging of the tide so let us say moon is in first quarter what happens when the moon is in first quarter here is the earth when the moon is in first quarter say over here what happens is the tidal force of moon being stronger than the sun i may represent the tidal force vector like this for moon and like this for sun if i make the parallelogram the diagonal points in this direction which means there is going to be effective high water in this direction and if there is a person who goes round with the earth you have pile up of water here but the earth underneath is spinning and if this person goes with the earth he will experience the high water first and moon later this will happen when the moon is in first quarter as well as third quarter the person or any observer will find the high water before the moon's meridian passes so this is called priming of tide right so this is priming of tide this will happen when the moon is over here or over here let us see what happens when the moon is in second quarter and the fourth quarter okay when the moon is in second quarter when the moon is in second quarter okay then there is a stronger gravitational pull in the direction of moon high water is here also whereas the high water that is caused by sun is in this direction and this direction so i may represent the vector force of the sun in this direction if i complete the parallelogram see what happens there is diagonal pointing in this direction which means that the effective high water will be in this direction and in this direction so if there is an so if there is an observer who is spinning with the earth underneath the tide now this person will experience the meridian passage of the moon before the high water so he is experiencing the high water after the meridian passage of the moon so this is called lagging of the tide so i hope you have understood what is spring tides what is neap tides what is priming of the tides and what is lagging of the tides now let's talk about the equilibrium theory of tide here is the earth and i'll just show moon not the sun to understand it and because of moon there is a heap of water that is caused on one side low water at places which are 90 degrees away and then again the heap of water on the other side now this equilibrium theory assumes that the earth is homogeneous like there is a body of water all around and there are no continents no islands the moon not uh, revolving around the earth a lunar day will be of 24 hours which means that in 24 hours all over the earth we should get two high waters and two low waters that means everybody on the earth should experience what is called semi diurnal times now this tidal pattern which occurs all over the earth should be uniform systematic and similar now this actually does not happen actually it does not happen this way that every place on the earth gets 
two high waters and two low waters they experience what is called semi diurnal tides and uniformity of the tidal timings and range is not there so let's see why it happens 